Okay, we're gonna crack the seal on a package of Topps 18 trading cards. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the A-Team game that was unreleased for the Atari 2600, made by Howard Scott Warshaw. Into the But first, the crack the seal. You'll notice that this is not a mint pack. Uh, I took the price tag off and I got a little uh, damage to the package. So let's open it. There's the gum, a little bit fell out. The Topps 18 card set from 1983 included 66 cards and 11 stickers. Each wax pack contained 10 cards, a sticker, and a piece of bubble gum. The set was based on the A-Team TV show, one of the most popular and iconic action TV shows of the early 80s. Saboteur is an Atari 2600 game designed by Howard Scott Warshaw as his magnum opus for the Atari 2600. The game was designed to be in the same universe as Warshaw's Yard Revenge. In the game, you play as Hot Todd. Your job is to save the world from nuclear annihilation. The first screen is the launch site. Here, a rocket that will carry the warhead is being constructed and you must shoot the robots to prevent the assembly. The blue robots are Cotiles. Remember that name from Yard Revenge? They must be prevented from reaching the right side of the screen. Sometimes these also come in the form of yar flies. The master robot is at the top of the screen. He shoots at you and cannot be destroyed. Gorfons are yellow guys that are trying to help you disassemble the rocket. Your job is to protect them so they can do their work. If you don't succeed in preventing the rocket from being built, you get to the next screen. If you do succeed, you get to the next screen too. The Warhead Assembly Room. On this screen, you battle the master robot to stop the pieces of the rocket from traveling on the conveyor belt at the bottom of the screen. You can't shoot the conveyor belt pieces directly. You destroy them by shooting at the master robot. Your shots then bounce off him towards the conveyor belt and the rocket pieces below. You can't touch the master robot. You also must dodge the security drones at the same time. This level is harder if you did not prevent the warhead assembly in the first screen. If you don't destroy all the warhead pieces on the second screen, you're forced into a battle with the warhead itself on the final screen. If you take too long to destroy the warhead, it launches and the galaxy is destroyed. It's an interesting game with a lot of variety. If it was released, I believe it would be Atari Inc.'s final Atari 2600 game based on an original concept. You can read more about the design of this game in Howard Scott Warshaw's book, Once Upon Atari. Saboteur was never released by Atari, but instead saw a self-published release in the 2000s. So why am I talking about Saboteur in a video about the A-Team? 
Well, at the time it was designed and programmed, Atari got the license for the A-Team TV show, and the game was redesigned for that franchise, but never released. I loved the A-Team as a kid. All of the actors on the A-Team show were great, but my favorite, of course, was Mr. T, who played B.A. Baracus, the tough-talking, mohawk-wearing badass who hated to fly and had a heart of gold. In the A-Team version of Saboteur, you play Mr. T, or at least the iconic head of Mr. T, mohawk and all. The action on the first screen is generally the same as in Saboteur, but now the blue robots look more like henchmen from an A-Team episode running across with the warhead parts. The Gorfons, who were your helpers in Saboteur, are now the face of Howlin' Mad Murdoch from the A-Team, played by Dwight Schultz on the TV show. The Yar is a secret agent of some type, it's hard to tell. The Master Robot is now Colonel Decker, the A-Team's arch nemesis on the TV show, played by Lance DeGault. The second screen has Mr. T shooting at Colonel Decker to bounce shots off him to hit the warheads. As noted on AtariProtos.com, this seems to make no sense in the A-Team universe, but maybe it does. If you recall, almost no one ever got shot on the A-Team. Maybe bouncing bullets off Decker was just a salute to the mostly non-violent, cartoony nature of the TV show. On the third screen, the warhead has been replaced by a helicopter that Mr. T must destroy. The A-Team was one of my favorite shows, and I'm sure I would have bought this game and loved it in 1983. I think I would have liked the A-Team theme much more than the sci-fi theme from Saboteur, but that's just me. But alas, the game was never released and now lives in the annals of the vertical blank. We were children of the Silicon Revolution, an X-generation conscripted to fight the console and home computer wars. A product of an analog 70s childhood, we came of digital age in the 80s, believing we could affect the world 8 bits at a time. Armed with joysticks, full-stroke keyboards, jolt cola, and MTV haircuts, we proceeded into the vertical blank. There, we stayed up late at night, devising incantations from D&D rulebooks and beginner all-purpose symbolic instruction code. Video games were the match and programming was suffused as the infinite possibilities of the digital world exploded into the internet age to come. We are Generation Atari. Into the vertical blank.